This is a really important video because not only are we going to learn how to solve a particular kind of problem, problems involving uniform accelerated motion, but we're also going to learn a very general problem solving strategy that we're going to use throughout the whole year. To talk about this strategy, we're going to first of all use our reference tables. So if you want to find the section of the reference tables that has these formulas right here, because these are the ones that we're going to concentrate on. Now a formula, which I have five of them here, is just a relationship between variables. And I know it looks like there's a lot of letters here, but really there's basically four, although some of them have a couple different flavors. So the four variables are distance, velocity, acceleration, and time. So notice here's a D, here's time, so D is distance, T is time. This is V with a bar over it, that means average velocity. Here's acceleration. Delta V means change in velocity, there's time again. Here's VF, that's final velocity. VI is initial velocity. Here's acceleration again, here's time again. There's distance again, initial velocity time, acceleration, time squared, and here again you have final velocity and initial velocity, and acceleration and distance. So really, we only have four variables. So let's, let's do this. Let's write down, right on your reference tables, let's just make this list. So I'm going to make another column here, and I'm going to call it variables. And you could write this next to the word mechanics on your reference tables. All we want to do is we're going to make a list of what the variables are that are in each of these formulas. So we can kind of make it like a lookup table later on. So first of all, let's look at this formula. And I can see there's a D, and there's a V, and there's a T. So I'm going to write D, V, and T for this formula. Next formula has got an A, a V, and a T. So I'm going to make A, V, T. Now this formula, there's V's, there's A, there's T. V's, A's, and T's. So this has got the same three as this one has. So let me write that down. So there's A, V, and T. Now I'm going to look at this formula. Now notice this formula has got D, it's got a V, it's got a T, and A. So it actually has all four variables. Distance, velocity, time, and acceleration. So here I have a D, and a V, and an A, and a T. So this is actually the only formula that if all four variables are involved in the problem that I'm going to do, this is my formula right here. And then in my final formula, I notice V's and an A and a D. So that's right there. So this one just has V and A and D. And I notice about this one that this is the only formula of any of the four that doesn't have time in it. So if they don't ask me about time and they don't give me the time, then this is the only formula. This formula is the only formula that's got all four variables in it. So there's only four variables, distance, velocity, acceleration, and time, and these are the relationships between them. So what we want to talk about now is a strategy for selecting the right formula. So here's our strategy for how we're going to use our reference tables to do these problems and to select the correct formula. So first of all, after reading the problem, I make a list of the variables that are involved in the problem. In other words, I identify whether it's distance or velocity or time or acceleration that's involved in the problem that I've been given. Next, we find the formula that has just those variables and we write it down. And this is where we use what you saw just on the last slide where we wrote down the variables that are involved in each of the formulas. So I use that as a lookup table. If the formula just has velocity and acceleration and time in it, then I would use either this one or this one. So it's very important that I find the formula that has just the variables that are involved in the problem. 
Notice also, though, that how accurate my list is is going to tell me how accurate this step will be. Next, after I've written down the correct formula, I substitute values into the formula with units. This is a habit that everybody needs to get into because on the Regents exam, uh, a point is given for substituting units into the formula. And a lot of people consider the numbers to be a lot more important than the units, but on the Regents exam, the units are just as important as the numbers. Then finally, solve for the unknown and write the answer once again with units. The Regents does not give us credit for a number all by itself. We have to write the number with the units. All right, let's try out our new strategy by doing a couple of problems just to see how this works. So the first problem we're going to try is a car is traveling at 15 meters per second, and it then accelerates at a rate of 2.5 meters per second squared for 17 seconds. How far has the car traveled during the 17 seconds? Well, I look at the strategy, and the first thing it says is after reading the problem, we're going to make a list of the variables involved in the problem. In other words, distances, velocities, accelerations, and time. So first of all, as I go through the problem, I can see a car is traveling at 15 meters per second. So I'm going to write this down. That is the initial speed is 15 meters per second. Initial means, which I'm using an I for initial, that's the speed I start out at. I could also have V final, which is the speed you end up at. It says then the car accelerates at a rate of 2.5 meters per second per second, which is another way to write meters per second squared. So 2.5 meters per second squared is an acceleration. So it's 2.5 meters per second squared. And the question, then it says, how far has the car traveled um, during 17 seconds? So actually, 17 seconds is another variable. So time is 17 seconds. And the question is, how far has the car traveled? So that's a distance. So I write that down, even though I don't have a number for it. I literally write distance equals I don't know. And the reason that I do that is so that I can circle those variables and say, these are the variables involved in the problem. And at that point, that's when I go to the table that we had before that lists the variables and the formula that goes with the variables. So if I look at this table, I can see I'm looking for something that's got V's, A's, T's, and D's. So because I wrote this right on my reference table, I can see here's D, V, A, and T. So that means I want that formula. So I write that formula down. D equals V, I, T plus one-half A, T squared. All right, now my next step is to substitute values into the formula with their units. So D will equal V initial, which is 15 meters per second. So I'm going to make sure to write the units in. Times 17 seconds plus one-half times 2.5 meters per second squared times 17 seconds, which I have to square. So this means, by the way, that I'm going to square the 17 and I square the seconds. All right. So now I just calculate it. 15 times 17 in my calculator, uh, I want to round off to two numbers, two significant figures. 260 meters plus 1 half times 2.5 times 17 seconds squared. So the number that this is going to give me is 360. Now I notice what I have is I have meters per second squared times seconds, which is going to be squared. So actually the second squareds are going to cancel out. So I'm going to be left with meters here. 
Over here, I had meters per second times seconds. Seconds canceled out. I have meters. So then, my final step is to write down the answer with the units. So a car traveling 15 meters per second accelerates at a rate of 2.5 meters per second squared for 17 seconds. How far does the car go in the 17 seconds? The answer is 620 meters. Now let's just try one last one here. Now actually, if you'd like to see how you're doing here, you could pause the video here, write the problem down, and give it a try, see what your answer is, and then continue playing the video to see how you did. So this problem is a car moving at 25 meters per second, puts on the brakes and stops. The car travels 125 meters while it's stopping. What is the acceleration of the car? Now, in common usage, we would say that the car is decelerating, not accelerating. But in physics, deceleration is an acceleration. So we'll always have the term acceleration, whether the car is speeding up or it's slowing down. First of all, let's uh, use our strategy. And the first step in the strategy is let's make a list. So let's see what I have. A car is moving at 25 meters per second. So just like before, this is going to be my initial speed is 25 meters per second. That's what I start out at. And the car puts on the brakes and stops. So stopping, even though there's not a number there, is my final speed is zero. So one of the important things to do when I'm making my list is find things that are in the problem, variables that are in the problem that are actually kind of text instead of numbers. So I have a final speed of zero. Car travels 125 meters while it's stopping. So 125 meters is a distance. The distance is 125 meters. And then the question simply is, what is the acceleration? So what I'm going to do is write acceleration is, I don't know. Now again, the reason I make the list like this vertically is so that I can draw a circle around the variables to highlight them for myself and then compare them on the reference tables to the little table I made to see what formula to use. So I pull out my reference tables and noticing the formulas with the variables listed. So these are the variables that are all listed. I need a formula that's got VI, VF, distance, and acceleration. So I notice, first of all, that uh, this formula down here says Vs, As, and Ds. No T is listed here. All the other formulas have a T. There's no T in here. So this is my formula right here. So I'm going to write that down. So I need to write my formula down. So the formula is... Vf squared equals V initial squared plus 2AD. Okay, then my next step is going to be to substitute the var variables in with their units. All right, so V final is actually zero. So zero meters per second because that's stopped equals the initial speed, which is 25 meters per second, squared plus 2 times a which is what I don't know times 125 meters so now I have to solve for the unknown and the unknown is sitting way over here it's a so now it's just basic algebra I gotta undo everything so that I can get the a all by itself so first of all I notice this is 0 0 squared is 0 and to get the A by itself, first of all, I have to move this over to the other side. So I'm going to have, I have to subtract minus 25 meters per second squared from both sides. So over here I'm going to have minus 25 meters per second squared. And that's going to equal 2 times A times 125 meters. So in my calculator, I do 25 squared, and so that's 625, so I'm going to have minus 625. Now when I square the units, 
I'm going to have meters squared over seconds squared. So 25 meters per second squared is 625 meters squared per second squared. Then over here, I have the A, and I'm going to have 2 times 125 meters. So it's basically going to give me 250 meters times A. So to solve for the A, I need to divide 625 meters squared per second squared by 250 meters. So A will equal minus 625 meters squared over second squared divided by 250 meters. Now here again the part that people are mostly used to is just working with the numbers but we have to work with the units too so as to get that credit. So actually, actually it's meters squared over second squared, sorry. Alright, so if I divide 625 by 250 negative 625 by 250, I get minus 2.5, and let's see what happens to the units. I'm going to have meters squared per second squared divided by meters. So this meter is going to cancel out one of those, so I'm going to have meters per second squared. In other words, the meter squared, one of the meters cancels it, so I just have meters left, but the second squared stays. So the answer to the question is negative 2.5 meters per second squared. And notice, even though I solved for acceleration, I got a negative number. And a negative acceleration is a deceleration. So I automatically got that it was a deceleration. Okay, here's a practice question that I would like you to try, and then show me the solution when you come in tomorrow. A bullet starting from rest in a gun, which has a 0 0.5 meter long barrel, experiences an acceleration of 250,000 meters per second squared. And we're asked two questions here. How fast will the bullet be moving when it leaves the gun? In other words, when it gets to the end of the barrel. And part B, how long is the bullet in the gun? In other words, what amount of time does the bullet spend in the barrel of the gun? So show me your answer tomorrow.